going to have our scripture reading now from Matthew chapter 13, and Carol's going to read to us. The reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 30. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds amongst the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you're pulling up the weeds, you may also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it to my barn. Continuing to read verse 36. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came with him and said, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. And the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are, be, are pulled up and burnt in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The son of man will send out his angels and they will weed out his kingdom out of his kingdom, everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Beautifully read uh, for that parable that uh, we're looking at today. Um, we're looking at we've been looking at uh, parables over the last few weeks, and we're going to continue in this series of looking at some of the parables of Jesus, seeing the wonderful stories that Jesus told. Jesus was a master storyteller, and he used stories to make the point about how it was to be God's people. He told stories about living for Christ and he told stories about his kingdom, what it was to know Jesus as king and for all people and structures to fall in line with the authority of the Lord God and of his son Jesus. Today we're looking at this parable that um, goes by different names, the parable of the weeds or the parable of the wheat and the tares as it's called in uh, the old uh, King James version, tares, T-A-R-E, tear. Uh, the, the word tear is a, a technical term for the kind of weed that grows in wheat fields, otherwise known as a, a darnel or false wheat. It's a crop that looks just like wheat as it grows, but then when it's ripe, instead of turning golden brown the way wheat does, it turns a black colour because it's not wheat at all. It's a, it's a false wheat that you can't eat. And um, sometimes if it gets in with the wheat, it, it can um, spoil the wheat. It's, it, it can make the wheat not edible if, it, if it's harvested along with the wheat. Uh, mixed, the grains are mixed together. So it's a, it's a nasty weed that's still known to this day. And the story is about, is about a field where the good wheat is grown by the farmer, who we're told represents Jesus. The, the, the sower is the son of man, who is Jesus. Jesus says in the explanation of the parable. But these weeds, this false wheat, is sown by the enemy, who is the devil. 
and both crops grow up together. And the farmer says, well, you can't pull up the fault wheat, the weeds, because if you do, you'll damage the crop, you'll damage their, uh, their roots and it won't grow properly. So you have to let them grow together. And it's only when you come to harvest time uh, that the weeds will be burned as fuel. They're, actually, they won't be wasted. They won't just be thrown away. They'll be good ecological principles. If you've got something that will burn, you can use it as fuel. But the, the, the weeds will be burned as fuel, but the wheat will be kept for its purpose to feed the nation. Uh, the farmer will use the wheat, the good wheat, for its purpose. That's the story. And then after another story in between, Jesus gives an explanation of the story, not for all the people who heard the story, not for all the, the people who gather around to listen to him, but just for his disciples who go into a private place and hear the explanation of how the farmer is Jesus, the field is the world, the enemy is the devil, and the harvest is the end of the age, the day of judgment. And on that day, there will be that separation of the weeds and the wheat. And the weeds are, he says in verse 41, everything that causes sin and all who do evil so it's not necessarily just individual people although individual people are involved but it's everything that causes sin so all influences for evil as well as all those who are in the uh, the kingdom of the devil as it says in other places the, the the people who are not gods but are of the devil uh the wheat is the righteous. In other words, those who have been made righteous by Christ, those who are the people of Jesus, the community of the faithful. And these, it says in verses 43, will shine like the sun in God's kingdom. It's interesting how the word kingdom is used in different ways in this parable. Uh, and here in verse 43, the kingdom is the, the future kingdom, the uh, the the uh, the future heavenly kingdom that will become uh, the, the 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 inaugurated kingdom that will be brought about by the return of Jesus, where all the righteous, all those who are made right by the uh, the sacrificial death of Jesus, will shine like the sun. It says this parable is only is one of only three of Jesus's parables, which we get a a detailed interpretation of. But to get into it properly, we need to see what it means for us and to understand what Jesus means by that kingdom coming for us. This is a story about God's holy people, what he calls his righteous and his kingdom. Throughout history, and you may have heard people talk about this in the past, not that I want to be critical of others, but in, in history, this parable has been used as an illustration of unholiness in the church. People have taken the field in this story to be the church, whatever we mean by that, the institution of the church, and how the church is made up of good Christians and bad Christians. And how in the end the bad Christians will be weeded out of the church. But that isn't what this story is about. For two reasons it isn't about the church being weeded. One reason for that is that Jesus would never have thought of church like that. Jesus never thought of the church as an institution of good people and bad people. People who met in buildings and were part of a big organisational structure. That was a million miles from the way Jesus thought about what he called church, the people he called to follow him. When Jesus used the word church, he meant just simply meant the people who followed him, the people who would follow his ways, called by God, filled by his spirit. Not a new institution, a new religion in the way we use the word. Uh, so Jesus would never have thought of the parable as being about an institution of the church which, may, which had good and bad people in it. That's not the way he thought of it. And secondly, it's, that's a wrong interpretation because the, by, the, the story itself, the interpretation of the story itself says that that's not what the field is. In verse 38, it says, the field is the world and the good seeds stand for the people of the kingdom. 
the weeds are the people of the evil one. It says that explicitly in verse 38. So these other interpretations uh, clearly are, they, they might be a helpful way of looking at a certain thing, but they're not what the story is about as Jesus intends it. The story is about how we as God's people, the people of the kingdom as Jesus saw it, not the people who go to church or some other institutional understanding, but the people of God's kingdom, Jesus people, how Jesus people live out the Jesus life in the world. That's what this story is about. In the time of Jesus, the Jews knew the Messiah would bring about the new age. And they expected that when the new age came, Messiah would establish a pure community. When that happened in their day, uh, they expected that the oppressors, the Romans and all other enemies would retreat. And the new Israel, as they would expect it to be, would be a pure nation of all kingdom people, of all God's people. So Jesus' first listeners and followers would have been asking, well, if you are the promised one, why are the Romans still here? Why is there still bad in the world? Why is the separation of the righteous from the unrighteous not happening here and now? Why is judgment not happening here and now? One teacher near the time of Jesus said this. He said, Messiah will come. He will purge Jerusalem of Gentiles. He will drive out sinners. He will gather a holy people and be intolerant of the unrighteous. It's not, Jesus didn't say that, but that's what another, another Jewish rabbi at the time who was talking about Messiah was saying at about the same time as Jesus. But in Jesus, none of this was happening. Jerusalem was not being purged. <laughs> Uh, Jesus wasn't being intolerant of the unrighteous in that sense. He was calling them to, to repentance, but he wasn't simply saying, go away, all you unholy people. He was calling them to him. Jesus is saying, my kingdom's not like that. My kingdom's come, it's here, he says, but it's not yet fully complete. My kingdom is like a field that's growing, but harvest time has not yet come. And while my kingdom grows, God is at work, yes, but the devil is at work as well. But God is holding back judgment. Judgment isn't for the here and now, Jesus was saying. Judgment will come, but God wants to give people time to turn to him. So we shouldn't be surprised that evil still flourishes because we are still in that in-between time, that in-between time between the coming of Jesus and the final return of Jesus. And in this in-between time, the kingdom is growing, but evil still exists. And we shouldn't be surprised that wickedness, that evil, that bad things still flourish. Yes, we as God's people should still oppose those things we should still stand for justice and against injustice we as christians can't be passive in the face of racism we can't be passive in the face of violence we can't be passive in the face of greed and uh, inequality or any kind of evil whether in the church or in society at large we need to be standing against those things and we need to be seeing his kingdom grow by more and more and more individuals coming to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, coming to know the kingdom of our God and of his Christ, our Lord Jesus. We need to be working for that kingdom incessantly day by day for his justice and righteousness and for men, women and children to know Christ as Lord and Savior. But there is still evil in our society though that wheat and tares weeds are still growing side by side and we need to be living for the kingdom in this world which is still waiting the day of judgment and that's what this parable is about so what does that say to you and me here and now four quick things four quick things and i won't make them too long i'm, I'm i assure you number one 
what should we be doing in this world, this field of mixed wheat and, and, and weeds? Number one, be patient. This parable teaches us that God does have a plan for this world and he is working it out and making it happen. But Jesus is teaching us patience, the patience of a God who chooses to delay judgment. God isn't in a hurry. Let mercy triumph over judgment. And we have to trust him and wait for his time to come. In the end, God will win and, God, and good will overcome evil. But now we're living in in-between times and evil will prosper alongside goodness. We have to be patient. Number two, be alert. Not be alert to the virus, as Boris Johnson would have us do, though we can do that as well. But be alert to evil around us. There is enemy at work in the world. Alongside the power of God's kingdom, there is another power at work in the world seeking to disrupt God's plans. The weeds are growing among the wheat. This parable says, don't be surprised by evil in this world. The devil is having his day. His power is on the loose and won't be removed until judgment day. So for now, we should stay alert. We should be watchful and standing up against evil in all its forms. In our lives. Yep, you and me in our lives. In our church, yes, in our church and in the wider church, not to point fingers at anyone, but there is still evil there lurking. And of course, in the wider society, in all places. Not that we see the devil under every, uh, under every chair and in round every corner, that, that's too, pushing it too far, but we need to be aware that there is, there are evil forces at work in this world as well. We need to remain alert. Be patient, be alert. Number three, be humble. Be humble. God is the judge of all things and all people and all structures in society, not you and me. The parable says, yes, there are two groups, what the Bible calls the, the righteous of God's kingdom and the wicked. But the only difference between them, sisters and brothers, is the grace of God and our response to the grace of God. God wants everyone to be saved. We can't be high and mighty and say, well, of course, I'm one of the righteous and they're one of the wicked. We know we have to be humble. In the end, every person will face judgment. But it's not for you and me to judge who's in and who's out. It's for us to live for Christ and to seek to point others to Christ. And then fourthly, be fruitful. We are called to partner with God's purposes. The parable sees us as the seed that Jesus plants in the field, which is the world, and he wants us to be fruitful for his kingdom, growing the fruit of the kingdom. It's not all up to us, of course. We can't fix the world just by our efforts. But God calls us into partnership with him to grow well and to do our part. So four things we can do in the wheat field in which we grow. To use this parable language, be patient, be alert, be humble, be fruitful. Four things we can do. One day, judgment day will come. But until then, we are to be God's people working for him alongside others who are working against his work and it will always be so until judgment day comes lord help us to be his people in this world to be fruitful to be patient to be humble to be alert to be his people let's pray mm -hmm.